RoboVan, a new invention by Tesla that's going to blow your mind. Shout out to the Tesla space. Hit a like and subscribe to these folks. Now let's get in to this video. Let's get it, baby, baby. It's electric. This is a Tesla vehicle that the world was not ready for, but it's also the Tesla vehicle that the world needs more than anything. We all saw the future this month, but most of us just don't know it yet. First of all, why does it look like that? So yes, on one hand, the Tesla Robovan could be considered the strangest looking vehicle since the Tesla Cybertruck, and it is unusual, that's for sure. But the more I look at it, the more I think it actually doesn't look that weird at all. A lot of the impact of this vehicle comes down to its styling. Black and gold is not a typical color scheme for a vehicle, not recently at least. Back in the 60s and 70s, you would have seen gold cars with black accents more often, but it's generally considered a little too bold, bordering on tacky. If you look at Jeff Goldblum playing the god Zeus in this new Netflix show, they give him a black and gold wristwatch paired with a velour tracksuit and these high fashion glasses to make the character appear visually as over the top as possible. Now, I can guarantee you that the reason Tesla chose this gold tone for the Cybercab and Robovan was to make sure that they do not look like any other car you've ever seen, unlike anything on the road today. It's now, hold on. The gold is amazing. The gold, you can't deny. If you're denying the gold, then you old. If you're denying the gold, you probably fold. If you're denying the gold, then you're probably not the one who's chose. Gold is on the rose. I was trying to rhyme. <laughs> it's an anti-trend. Even that gold paint applied to the sidewall of the tire, that's there to enhance the visual strangeness. And strange is not always bad, but it can be jarring at first, and that is the point here. Also, light bars. We are just starting to get used to seeing cars with a light bar at the front or the back. Now, here comes the Robovan with five light bars that wrap around the entire body. Aesthetically speaking, we have to use the rule of odds here. One light bar would look silly. It wouldn't be enough unless it was just one big chungus light bar. It do look futuristic. Y'all can't deny that, okay? The light bars, the gold, the gold's nice. I saw it when it was in like the silver or maybe the white. It wasn't that dope, but pretty cool. Thing looks so weird. It instantly triggers your brain into thinking that this is some kind of spaceship or hovercraft or a vehicle that belongs in a movie, but not in real life. Okay, it was gold at the event. You know, I wasn't at the event, so it don't look gold to me. All right, cool, I can see it now. Basically, same effect as the Cybertruck, just even more extreme this time around, because with the Cybertruck, your brain could at least make an analogy to a regular pickup truck, just with a different shape applied to the body. While Robovan looks like it was designed by a space alien who had never seen a van before, and... Yo, why that space alien using a pencil? Like, really, my G? Like, how you gonna be an alien and you still using a number two pencil? <laughs> Come on, man. An alien using a number two pencil to draw him. Plus, he's a narcissist. Why he got a photo of himself? We're like, come on, come on, alien. That's the point. That's first principles design. And of course, this is all functional as well. It's not done just for the sake of being weird. That skirt around the bottom is going to make this vehicle incredibly efficient and aerodynamic. Let's take a look at another reference here, the modern NASCAR race car. Notice how the front and side extend almost all the way down to the pavement. Tesla has just taken this functional design concept to the extreme. Here's a crazy theory I saw on the internet. I didn't come up with this, but I think it makes sense. Tesla could use that skirt to create a negative pressure vacuum underneath the Robovan that would help it stick to the road surface. You've probably never seen this car before. It's called the McMurdy Spearling. It was just reviewed by Top Gear the other day, and it's the fastest car in the world. Not that joint is pretty nice, I ain't gonna lie. As well, and it accomplished this by using powerful fans that create a vacuum underneath the car and suck it down into the road surface. Combined with an aerodynamic body, this gives the car an unprecedented amount of traction, downforce, and stability in all driving conditions. Now, of course, the Robovan wasn't built to go racing, but 
Maybe it was designed to go around corners at very high speeds on a very narrow roadway. Boring Company Tunnel? Hopefully this is starting to make sense. Ooh. We know the company has long since abandoned I didn't think about that one. That's that's interesting. Okay, okay. I see what you're putting down. Let me see if I can continue to pick it up. I'm going to let him talk. That, that That's interesting. I didn't think about that. You let's get it. And that idea of putting the cars on rails or powered tracks like what we saw in those very early renderings, which is going to make the tunnel much more practical to build. But now it means that the potential speed of travel is limited by the vehicle's ability to navigate curves. Looking at the Boring Company tunnel plans for the city of Las Vegas, there are several curves that the vehicle will be required to navigate. Some of them are pretty hard turns. With a Tesla Model Y or even Model X, that's not a big deal because they handle very well. But with something as big and tall as this robovan, it might need some help. One way to think of this is kind of like a decentralized hyperloop. Instead of creating a vacuum environment throughout the entire tunnel and trying to get all of the air out with a giant pump, we focus instead on getting the air out from underneath the vehicle with a relatively small pump and create a localized vacuum that would still allow the vehicle to travel much faster. Than yeah, yeah, uh, excellent, right? Travel much faster and then it actually is localized, causing the expenses and overhead and maintenance and maintaining the whole entire vacuum throughout the tube to be a little bit little to none on the, on the energy time attention and money and what would be physically possible without the vacuum jumping back to the real world environment where this continuous skirt design might still appear totally useless it's not it actually makes the robovan much safer not necessarily for the people inside but for everything else around it with the wheels hidden and the body extended all the way down to the road surface, it becomes impossible for the robovan to run anything over. If you get hit by a car, you're going up over the hood. That sucks, but it could be worse. If you get hit by a truck or a bus or a van, you're going underneath, and that's the last place you want to be. It probably is the last place you'll ever be, because you'll be dead. Autonomous Facts. driving AI, if it works as intended, should make it very unlikely that the robovan will ever hit anything or anyone, but it's not impossible. And with a high volume of these things on the road over a period of months and years, the probability of a collision becomes 100%. It will happen. And when we start to think about these vehicles out there in the real world, driving on real streets, that's where things get really interesting. Our now let's skip forward a little bit. ...size of a bus, especially something like a double-decker or an articulated bus, only serves to make it less efficient, less versatile, and significantly more dangerous for anyone inside or outside of the vehicle. The reason that we historically kept making each bus bigger instead of having multiple smaller buses comes down to two key factors. Not crystal. Come on, two big key factors. What are those two big factors? is drivers. Not everyone wants to be a bus driver. It's not a bad job, and in most areas it pays well, and we're not going to get into the neoliberal education system's obsession with demonizing blue-collar work, but the fact is that the supply of drivers is limited. Limited, so why would somebody want a driver? But we could actually boost that up by just having artificial intelligence do the driving. Now he points to that, those are great points. What I want to get into the show actually is that they're trying to actually transport people, but also packages. Now, one of the things that most people might not understand is the last mile. They possibly don't even know, understand the supply chain of transportation, but the cost of shipping, most of the highest part of the cost for shipping comes from the last mile. And so high shipping costs are often associated with last mile delivery. While last mile delivery is the most expensive and time consuming part of shipping process, it is key to overall customer satisfaction. Now, last mile, last mile, guys, long haul, when you're talking about a semi driving it, Tesla semis, that's a cheaper part of the actual transportation. But one of the more expensive sides of it is when you go to the last mile. Last mile delivery, right, is the final phase of the delivery process and a product's journey. It is moved from warehouse, right, so a warehouse or a distribution center, 
right, to the back of a truck to the customer's doorstep. So it's the distribution center to the truck to your doorstep. That's the final step of this process known as the last mile of delivery. And that's the most expensive one. And companies like Alibaba in China are trying to make attempts to figure out how do we solve for this? How do we reduce the actual cost of shipping? And this is the most expensive part. And so things like last mile as the last investment firm that I worked with, we worked towards purchasing industrial property and giving it the new distribution center or warehouse map functioning where people could store goods and products in an urban environment to get it closer to the doorstep. As far as taking it, and that's one part of solving the last mile issue, but also at the same time, we still have putting it on a truck and getting it to the doorstep. And you know, the FedEx and the UPS and the delivery thing is kind of still outdated and old. And so this robo van could be the solution to the potential problem of the expense that costs the most in the transportation system. So it's very interesting and definitely something that they could utilize the vehicle for. And not only could it go underneath the actual tunnel system with the boring help company helping us out in that, but also it can come to surface and then drive to the actual casa. Mesu casa, your casa, straight to your doorstep. I find it to be very interesting and a perspective that I didn't even think about. So very interesting to think about these things. I don't know if that's a direction of Tesla. Nobody knows. So only the future shall tell. But again, at the end of the day, this is not investment advice. Do your own due diligence, DD, and figure it out yourself and talk to your financial advisor for proper planning. Now, this is obstacles to opportunity. Everyone hates Tesla and I love Tesla, so I'm different. And Elon for the win. I'll see you guys on the next one. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get this high electricity every time that I come on these YouTube streets. I'll catch you guys on the next one. It's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. You can.